So in this last section on the interview process, we will be covering how the interview will be conducted, who are the people involved, as well as some tips to actually help you get started to uncovering insights about your users. So there are three roles in total. Uh, you've got your interviewer, who actually facilitates and is the main person in charge. The note taker, who helps to uh, record down all these notes. If you are able to find a quiet place to do your interviews, you can also use this app called otter.ai, O-T-T-E-R.ai, where you can do a free recording, which is automatically transcribed for you. That allows you to save a lot of time. Uh, if you are interested, please check with your tutor on how to use this app. And finally, you also have your observer, which uh, will actually help to take note of like certain details about the uh, interviewee, whether he or she felt at ease during the interview, what were some of his or her reactions, and so on. So for the interviewer, what is his role? Uh, I have a short video here, about 10 minutes long. Uh, I will give you some time to uh, watch this video before you proceed on with the activity. Uh, I will not be playing the video, so click on the link that you see in your notes and proceed to watch this video before continuing. Manage to complete watching the video. It provides quite a number of tips on how to conduct a great interview, right? Uh, these are things you will need to take note of as you uh, continue with uh, arranging your interviews. So just to highlight some of the key points from the video, through this interview, we want to extract user stories. We want them to tell us about how they see the world. Uh, we want them to relate some of the stories, their, their own personal experiences. And from there, we can actually experience the emotion and start to empathize for them. So that brings me to the next point where we want to gain empathy for the user. We want to try and identify the emotional needs that they don't share openly. So that's also where if we remember back to uh, the structure of our interview, designing the interview questions, uh, we actually started with talking about allowing them to talk about their demographic and what motivates them. These are The purpose of this question is also to help them feel comfortable with you help them to feel comfortable to share all these stories with you. And that will allow us to, uh, at the third phase of the interview, where we ask questions related to the project statement, they can uh, share even more openly. Lastly, we want to find surprises in uh, between the things they say and what they do, and eventually uh, what they actually need. So to give an example, it's really about, uh, we actually did this design thinking project with insurance agents. Uh, previously. So the product that they were trying to uh, promote or rather uh, the service that they are offering to the insurance agents was actually an app that allowed them to do financial planning. So during the uh, the interview, uh, what the insurance agent said was that, hey, you know, uh, they actually uh, love the app, they use it very frequently and they managed to close a lot of deals. But when we actually went back to check the statistics of their usage, we realized that actually a lot of them were not using it. And when we brought it up during the interview, that's where we could get a lot more insights and they told us uh, some of the reasons why uh, it may not be as uh, fantastic as what they originally shared. So uh, do try to find all these uh, differences so that uh, they are open to sharing or rather ask them about it so that they can possibly share why there's a difference in what they say and what we observe. And some additional tips that uh, would do you uh, allow you to, you know, get more insights. Uh, don't really suggest answer. Allow if they are thinking about it, uh, try not to interrupt their thoughts. Ask questions neutrally. Uh, don't ask questions like, hey, uh, this is good, right? This is good, right? It's as good as saying, uh, you know, tell me that this service is good. And lastly, of course, don't be afraid of silence. So that is where it's okay to leave some pauses, uh, allow your interviewee to reflect before they answer. So at the end of this phase, you need to feel like you have known your customer as a friend and you need to be able to relate the stories that have shaped the views of this friend. Next, let's proceed on to the note taker. What's important for the note taker? So if we read 
both of these phrases. Think about what you, uh, how you process the information and what are some of your thoughts after reading both of these. Done? If the first one gives you a lot more detail and tells you, gives you a bit more flavor into what the uh, interviewer is feeling at the point in time. As you can see, you know, uh, depending on the client, if there is sufficient time, if it's straightforward, we can address on the spot. But if it's more comprehensive, uh, like the one that show retirement or that, then probably it's best to go back and work it out before you come back. It really gives you the impression that this uh, person or this uh, service staff is really interested in trying to uh, give the best service to the user. As opposed to, if sufficient time, the agents will address it, otherwise it needs some rework. This really doesn't give us too much flavor and the thoughts into uh, what the service staff is actually thinking about. So at the end of the day, what we are looking for when you're taking notes is stories, uh, motivations, as well as emotions. And what we want to do is we want to take lots of pictures and collect the interview notes in verbatim using the interview template. So inside your toolkit, there's an interview template that you can use. And of particular importance is to take the notes in verbatim. So if you were to use the tool called author.ai, they will do that transcribing for you automatically. But if you are taking it by hand, please do note that you, know, you really need to uh, take the time or rather uh, make sure that you collect exactly what the user said, not what you think the user said or not a summary of what the user said. So do also uh, consider recording the interview, of course, with your interviewee's permission. So lastly, what does the observer do? The main role of the observer is to uh, observe the non-verbal cues of the interviewee. Interviewer will also be doing this, but as his main role is to engage the interviewee, he may not be able to catch everything. So that brings us to the end of this video. Proceed to the next video for a quick summary of what we have covered. Thank you.